Welcome back, everyone. Today, although it's summer, we are talking about the Trek Farley 9.6. This is an older video I have, and I'm posting it up with this because I pretty much have to. There is no fat bikes for me to ride. There's snow around, but I have no way of getting one just because of the whole pandemic situation, bike shortage. So the 2022 Farley 9.6 has stayed relatively the same, but one, its color is completely different and different from any other track bike and pretty much any other bike on the market. This has like a four-tone color to it and it looks really good. It looks even better in person, but that's for everyone to decide, not just me. Overall, as it's the 9.6 version, this means it is a carbon fiber fat bike. It's built for speed and it's gonna roll fast. Depending on what size you get, you will get a variety of tire sizes. So on the large and bigger, you go into 4.5s on the front and rear, and on the medium, you do go to a 3.8 on the rear. It does look as if there might be just enough clearance for a bigger tire on the rear, but obviously I'd assume at lower pressures, you're just running the chance of tire touching the frame. So that's something to be aware of. Depending which one you get right off the bat, it might look kind of like a mullet bike just because of that tire size difference. The rims stay the same, but the tire is completely different. So the Trek Farley 9.6 has been a pretty popular one throughout the years. One of my first videos I actually have out is of the 9.6 crash and ride. I'll link that around. It's pretty entertaining. It was a fast responsive bike. They haven't tweaked the geometry too much. Everything's relatively the same on it. What they've done is just put a more modern drivetrain on it. So it does have a one by drivetrain. It is obviously going to a GX 12 speed at this level. In the carbon levels, you pretty much have to get 12 speed. And when you're getting 9.6, Trek kind of bounces back and forth, whether you get the NX or the GX. I'd assume because there's no front suspension on this one, it's just going to a straight carbon fiber front fork. And that means they're able to put a SRAM GX level of shifting on it. That shifting is relatively fast and snappy. I've never had any issues with it. It's good enough that they were able to put an electric system to it. This bike doesn't come with the Axis, but SRAM now has that option of the GX system with Axis. Overall, it does come with the Sunringle mule foot wheels, which seem to be the go-to wheel choice of pretty much every Trek Farley bike and many other brands are uh, looking for like a really good set of wheels. They just work really well and they do have a 108 tooth rapid drive hub. So it is really fast engagement from the pedal stroke right to the wheel. There's none of that kind of play in it, which makes a huge difference, but at the same time, a pretty small difference. It's very noticeable when you notice it, but if you're not paying attention, you might never notice it. Still, it's a nice little nice little uh, upgrade to it. They have the Barbagazzi tires on them. So that's one of the biggest differences between this and a Farley 5. The Barbagazzi is a non-studdable tire, whereas the Farley 5 actually comes with a studdable narwhal. You're able to actually put studs in that, get better traction. This one truly is a trail bike. It's designed for the off-road trails where studs are helpful, but for the majority of the time, it's not. Um, if you're getting relatively good snow conditions where it's not melting and rock solid ice, the studs aren't going to add a huge amount of grip to it. So there's no real point in having them. This way you'll get a fast rolling tire in the summer and still a good tractionable tire in the winter, which cuts the price down, but not that much. They're still pretty expensive for mountain bike tires. Overall, it's got a really stable design to it. It's designed that you can actually adjust the rear wheel length so you can push it back and forward and adjust along horizontal sliding dropouts. This makes it for either really long and low for stable, easy climbs or just stable, easy rides, or you can really tighten it up to get a very similar to like an Excalibur or Trail XC bike that Trek also has. The dropper post on it is very fast reacting. It's nothing too fancy, but it's definitely got a good spring in there. You can feel how hard it actually pushes. It is a really nice one to use. I've played with it and it does work quite well. It is a tubeless ready setup, so that's great. Um, you'll be able to run that really low. I've not seen too much information on temperature ranges for tubeless fluid. Eventually, you have to assume it's going to freeze. Um, 
or at least slush up and not become as effective as it once was. Obviously being winter, you may be in more snow conditions, so there's less chance of needing that fluid, but it's something to kind of take into consideration as you buy this bike. There may be more maintenance to it, or it might not seal every puncture through a thorn and such at the lower, lower temperatures. And again, I'm not actually sure the temperature range of mountain bike fluid. It's uh, going to be different throughout each one. They do have that Bontrager switch axle, which I like. Just means that rear wheel has a removable Allen key built into the hub or into the axle, and that comes out to remove the front wheel as well. It just gives that front end a really clean look, and that's something I like. Just keeping things simple, the less things in the way, the better it looks. Downside to the fat bikes is they do have the cables on the outside. Not 100% sure, heard some stories over the time that it's due to maintenance and it's, there's going to be less overall issues with fluid like salt or snow melting inside the frame. As well, I guess the cables are going to be easily switched. So because it's a fat bike and you might be commuting with this more, you may have to change cables more often because of the grime and grit. I, it, I don't really know if that's a good reason for it, but that's theoretically why it's there. That quick, easy access, very easy to maintain. The overall bike is pretty nice looking. The blend they've done is really clean looking. The max tire size on it is a 4.726, which is interesting. And that's... um. That's kind of interesting that they're allowing that. Overall, I guess it makes no difference if you put a 27 and a half on it, which it comes stock with, or a 26 inch rim. If you want it a bit wider of a tie, you can get away with that, but otherwise it's a 4.5 inch wide, 27 and a half tire that comes stock with it. The brakes on it are really good. Um, they are just a double piston, but they'll have enough stopping power for pretty much any conditions. Through minus 40, you will notice a bit of um, feel of the brakes getting not as good, but that's just the cold, cold temperatures. You can still ride in that temperature, but they're definitely not as responsive as the summertime usage. Grips, which is really nice. It actually comes with ESI grips, and they are the chunky ones. I don't really know why they've put it on this particular bike, but it's a nice little feature. In cold weather, you know, rubber grips are going to harden up and potentially become very stiff. Whereas the ESI foam grips will still stay pretty soft and allow a feel through the bike and comfort. So that's most likely why they chose it, you know, pushing towards the winter usage of things. The overall weight of it with um, sealant and no tubes and such is 28.66 pounds, which is not bad. It's actually a pretty lightweight bike. Obviously, this one doesn't have a front fork. It is just all carbon fiber. The tires are going to be the heaviest unit on it. But getting rid of those tubes it actually saves probably a pound and a half of weight, which is pretty impressive overall. So the Farley 9.6 is for who? Let's talk about it. The Farley 9.6 is realistically for someone who wants a fast rolling bike in the summer and a fast rolling bike in the winter. It's definitely going to be one of the faster bikes in general on snow. Most other brands make snowworthy bikes to be a little more slower and surviving the winter and adventuring whereas Trek is really designing these bikes for the groomed trail conditioned um, riders who are used to riding fast and this is something you can continue even though it's winter inside their comfort zone it's going to be really nice to have that fit they do have that stranglehold adjustment, so you're able to adjust it. So realistically, anyone who wants to take biking serious, this is where it is. If you're in a winter location, you have to go for it. Um, with the overall bike, you can run 29.3.0 tire and wheels. Obviously, you'd need a custom uh, wheel with a 197 rear hub width. So it is possible to make like a stash out of this and add some sort of goofy design to it just that hub spacing is the only thing holding you back but there is lots of sizes to it the max rotor size is 210 on the front and 180 on the rear stock it comes with uh, 160 so this is some pretty major upgrades if you want 
It has a 121 millimeter press fit bottom bracket. So it's not the threaded style like many of Trek bikes are going to. It is still press fit. I don't really have a, a decision on either or. Neither is faster than the other or better than the other. Just honestly, it's probably the last thing you need to think about is the bottom bracket, press fit or threaded. Uh, for maintenance, threaded seems like an easier idea, but it doesn't really matter. When you look at all of the bikes from Trek, this one is aiming towards the XC styling. It does keep a fast geometry, fast rolling, planted. The strangle hold allows you to be a little more stable if you're going to load it up. There is not too many accessory mounts for this. Um, you can't put like a rear rack on this. Thule does make one, which is like a strap on one. So you could do some adventuring with it. But overall, it is designed to make a, a fast trail bike for summer and a fast trail bike for winter. This is your trail bike fat bike there isn't some sort of fat bike in between here it's not like a uh, the Farley 5 where it's a heavy lug where you have lots of options to it this is a trail bike it's meant to be fast and that's what it's supposed to do interestingly enough the one little feature which I picked up on that is just interesting honestly not many bikes have it anymore but this is compatible with a two by system it does have a mount in the frame built in for a low direct mount for front derailers i have no idea what you do with that that would be possible to put on like a shimano 2 by 12 setup from the road system or something along those lines you're gonna get really low traction and really low gearing that way but i mean the gx 12 speed is pretty low it's just a cool little feature. I guess if you're going to do a lot with this bike, you could potentially do that. Or even in the winter, you could just put on some highway kilometers in a snowy kind of tundra. There's some big epic rides out there. We have the Arctic Epica, and that one's like a 100 kilometer bike ride through the snow, through fields. And having, you know, a lot of gears for that and an extra low gear might be really nice for those extra long adventures. All right, guys, hopefully we'll get this out on the snow eventually. We'll see what happens. There's not much available for fat bikes, but we'll hopefully be able to borrow one at least. So subscribe and like if this helped you out. Otherwise, give me a shout and uh, let me know if you have any questions about this bike or any other Farleys. And uh, get your orders in because I think it's next year if you need one. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.